first African American Parental Environment Conference. Um, we hope that the information provided here for you today, you find it useful in getting involved at the campus level as well as the district level. So with that being said, um, enjoy yourself and I look forward to reading the comment cards. Once again, I want to say welcome. Thank you all for coming out this morning, early this morning, and taking part in this conference. We were really excited that we have the numbers that we have because this is a start, and we're going to build upon this, and we're going to spread the word, and we're going to grow and grow and grow. But um, like Ms. Russell said, my name is Jarrell McCullough. I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator for the Office of Facilities with the School District. And um, I was charged with a task to, to help engage the African American community with AISD. So we're going to have a continuous process, uh, a journey that's going to keep going on beyond this conference so we can get more involvement from all the parents in this community and especially African American community. So I'm excited. I look forward to working with you all. But today's focus is involvement. We want to get the parents involved because we know that if you're involved in your child's education, that child is more likely to be successful the success equity increases, and you know, some of your old school parents know, when our parents got onto us and, and encouraged us to do well, we stayed on the course. So we need to make sure we stay on our children and make sure they're focused individuals so they can be productive members of the society. So this conference is gonna give you some tools that you can take back home with you in order so you can know what's going on on the campus level to get involved with the PTAs, the CACs, and also at the district level. We have a lot of work to do and we need your input. Also, we have vendors aligned around to offer free services to you guys. Austin Community College, Austin Free Net, we have APD. Um, the firefighters are here. We have a lot of information to give to you so you can get more involved, not only with AISD, but also in the community. Get involved and let your voice be heard. Thank you for coming out. Well, CAC stands for Campus Advisory Council. And what that does is that you deal with all the things on a campus level. I think someone else is gonna get up maybe later and talk about some other things, but we do have the DAC, which deals with stuff on the district level. But on a campus level, we, uh, it serves as you have, it's a membership application, and actually you uh, apply for that membership. You have, um, it's a committee of parents, students, business committee, representatives, teachers, principals, and other campus staff. Also, there's been a lot of talk about some CACs not being functional, but everyone wants to know that on every campus that you're at and on your own campus, if the CAC is not functional, it is required by state law. So your CAC on your campus should be functional. And if it's not, then that's something you as parents and as we as uh, on, on the campus level or should go and talk and ask, why aren't we functional? Why is the CAC you know, here at our campus? So it should be on every campus. So if you, if you don't see it or if you don't know anything about it, if you want to get on the committee, you can talk to your school principal or some other representative. It says it's about the students. We address the students' needs and activities. It's the cooperation of the principal to make effective campus level decisions. And it's responsibilities. The responsibilities of the CAC is that we're given certain guidelines and certain things to look at with the principal. We're given the campus education plan, the CEP, the Campus Performance Plan, the Campus Improvement Plan, the Campus Staff Development, the Campus Level Waiver Request to the State, and the Campus Budget. So a lot of times the CAC, serving as a member at the CAC, you get a chance to see all these things that happen on the campus and you get a chance to give some input to see where funds should be put, where you know sometimes you have a decision like if we want on the budget, if we want to keep a half parent support specialist or do we want to keep a whole counselor. Those kind of things you do at a campus level with the decisions, you know, of the principal being the last uh, choice maker, but you do have some input on it. And the mission of the CAC is to promote excellent in education to students and through the representatives. Uh, it says CAC provides valuable input to um, others on the committee. Like I said, again, it's on the campus level. So you actually really, um, being a part of the CAC, you get a chance of saying what's going on on the campus. And also, I was talking about the membership criteria of CAC. It's the principal, and also on the CAC, whoever the PTA president on your campus, that person is automatically should be on the uh, CAC. The president has a choice to select someone if the president can't serve. 
and it's a minimum of six parent representatives that should be on the CAC, and also with every parent that should be a staff member, so that should be six staff members on the CAC. You have a member, uh, one classified person that should be on the CAC survey, and for high school, it's a little different because of the fact that on the uh, early uh, elementary, we don't really have any students at the high school level. You can't have students serving on the CAC. In LBJ, we do have students uh, serving on the CAC. And so we do have a time where we have agenda. We have a time where we have the students actually interact. And then um, also you have um, the middle schools and high schools, like I said, can have students. Some middle schools do, some don't, but the high schools really do have a lot of students on that. Also, you have a minimum uh, of one community representative and one business representative. And you have those on there to kind of get an act. Um, so the community will kind of know what's going on, and actually the business members will kind of know what's going on. And the uh, business members help do things that maybe the school can't get, help get resources and stuff for the, uh, for the school. So I think I'm up to uh, one minute. I'm really kind of shy, and uh, so I'm kind of running out of things to uh, not to say, but I can really keep uh, talking about the CAC. But like I said too, if you uh, the other night I had a program at um, at Andrews, a Black History program, and so I did even with this that sometimes we say we don't have time to do things, and I I, am, I have three students in AISD. I have a full time job. I am a caregiver for my father, but sometimes people say they don't have time, but I want to leave with you today that you do have time, because if you think about it, you have time, and time stands for you have time to teach, inspire, motivate, and empower. Thank you. First, I would like to say welcome again to everyone, especially our parents, community leaders, AISD employees, students as well, and those who are concerned about the plight of the African American community within AISD. Um, so basically we are here to really answer any questions that you may have regarding PTA, um, Austin Council PTA, Texas PTA, and National PTA. How many of you in the audience are members of a PTA? Excellent. How many of you all do not know what a PTA does? Okay, so we didn't have any hands going up, so that's good. At least we have that tidbit on the, uh, um, out there in the audience. So basically, why would you join a PTA? Or what is a PTA? I will hand it over to Monica to kind of say what a PTA is all, actually is, and then I will go into um, why join a PTA. So the Parent Teacher Association is a membership organization made up of parents, teachers, and community members within the community around every school in AISD. And anyone can be a member of PTA, whether you're a mom, the neighbor, an aunt, grandma, a business owner that lives near the school that's con that wants to help with the school, anyone can be a member. And it doesn't mean that you have to attend a meeting or that you have to go to any events, just be a member. It's one simple and easy step. And your membership in your local school includes membership in Texas PTA and the National PTA also. Awesome, thank you. So why join a PTA? People who love kids join. People who have a passion to inspire our kids to do well in their everyday life, in their community, in their schools, academically, spiritually, socially, as well as physically. Also, people join because they love a school that they can actually participate in. That's the first key in joining a PTA, is to contact a local school, maybe in your community if you do not have children um, who are school aged. Also, anyone who is concerned with the education, health and welfare of children and youth in our community can join. PTA membership keeps you informed and provides your child or other children around you with a greater chance of succeeding in school. Also, PTA creates a unique community within the school and its parents. Lastly, PTA members create exciting and extraordinary opportunities for their school, its children, the families, and school that they serve. Once you're on the PTA um, roster, 
you are actually a member of the Austin Council of PTA. So the Austin Council of PTA is that liaison between the local schools as well as the state PTA, which is Texas PTA. You're also a member of the national PTA, which affords you many benefits throughout um, um, the year, such as lower prices on your insurance, if you want to rent a car, if you want to go to Slitterbahn, if you want to go to SeaWorld, you have different discounts that you can actually partake in by becoming a PTA member. Not only that, you have hundreds of thousands of voices that meet every year at the Capitol to advocate towards children's uh, policies, um, helping our elected officials understand that the children are our future. And if we don't support them, who will? There should be a parent support specialist at some of the schools, not all of the schools. Um, if not a parent support specialist, there is a parent liaison at a particular school that you can go to, or even the principal. The principals are actually on our executive uh, board. Um, so they should know as well um, the contact person that you would want to uh, get in touch with in order to you know, get information regarding PTA. I, I grew up about a little over an hour south of here, and one of the keys to my success and my brother and sister's success is that we had really strong parental support and engagement. Uh, they were at every one of our activities, making sure that everybody knew whose son or daughter you know, we were, and we were well represented, and even to the point of being embarrassed sometimes, but I mean, they were, somebody was always there. You know, and uh, that built a real solid foundation. You know, all of us graduated from college. All three of us have at least a master's degree. You know, everybody is doing well and, um, you know, supporting their family and, you know, just, just kind of being responsible adults. And it is time for our generation to step up because even now my dad is 80, 81, it'll be 82 soon, but he's, you know, like the representative for the neighborhood and there's nobody behind him to do that. So um, we have an old African-American school in the neighborhood and he's the head of the foundation. He and my mother, you know, led that effort to get that um, donated to the community with a, a hundred, for a hundred years. And, you know, so you have activities, but then nobody shows up. And then when it's time to close the building and clean the building, here's an 80 year old man getting in his truck going to do all that work with nobody to help him. So there are things out there. We just have to take advantage of them and use them uh, for what they're uh, you know, there for. So advisory bodies, um, that kind of gets into how decisions are made because that's a chance to really have a voice on, you know, at the ground floor. Uh, can anybody tell me what one of the big decisions recently made by an advisory body was? The bond committee. So the bond committee, the Citizens Bond Advisory Committee. So that is one of these committees that reports to the superintendent with a recommendation, and then that recommendation becomes a, an administrative recommendation and goes to the board. So it doesn't mean that you're rubber stamping anything, but it does mean that you get to weigh decisions. If you want somebody to come back and give you more information on something, then you do that, and you know they met twice a week sometimes, they had an all day retreat, generally once a week, but a schedule goes out and it has to be posted 72 hours in advance so that everybody knows what's gonna be discussed at that meeting. And then the other thing is they're public meetings so there's time for public comment. So if you have an issue you wanna speak on, you know, there's time before the meeting begins, you look at the agenda and you can you know, say, you know, what your thoughts are on that subject or something else maybe that you think isn't considered that you think should be considered. So there is, well, there are two types of advisory bodies, uh, ad hoc, which is a temporary one, and then there's also standing advisory bodies. There's a district policy that tells how these um, bodies will be formed through a charter. They have to be open meetings and each advisory body has a staff assigned to support it. So I'm over operations, so some of the advisory bodies that my staff supports are the Citizens Bond Advisory Committee for the upcoming bond, 
which we can only say facts on because staff cannot advocate for that. But uh, it's already been approved by the board 9-0 uh, for roughly $892 million to be considered by the voters. Uh, the Citizens Bond Oversight Committee. So there's an oversight committee of citizens. Uh, you know, once a bond is approved, it has propositions in it which says what that money is supposed to be spent for and what category is to be spent in. So there's a citizens, a group of citizens that oversee that and make sure that, uh, that we adhere to the way things were, were approved by the voters. So citizens looking out for citizens. So that is the oversight. And that group reports directly to the board. They're appointed by the board and uh, report up to the board. And again, I support them. Another important group, I know Leticia Anderson was doing double duty, maybe triple duty. Triple duty, she tells me. Okay, but one of her important ones is the Boundary Advisory Committee. So that, you know, determines where the boundaries are going to be for a new school when it's built. And if there's a need to adjust boundaries to, um, to balance enrollments, that's something that's done there as well. And my time is about to run out. So I would just say that there are 14 advisory committees that you can sign up for. And Claudia Santa Maria, the parent support specialist, has copies of this that she's passing, passing out. And you can sign up using this as well. So let your voice be heard. And I know me, uh, myself, I look forward to work with you all. And community engagement is a really, really big deal. Alex Sanchez is back there, uh, the director, executive director of communications. We work very closely together. Jarrell is out of my office. He's going back and forth. So again, we're here to support you and look forward to your engagement. Thank you. Hello. Um, I'm here to introduce Los Ellis. So now a little bit about him. Los Ellis resides in sunny Austin, Texas, where he is a mentor, uncle, and adoptive parent to his nephew, Kendrick. Los's commitment to personal and community development is a testament to his devotion of education and community upliftment. His charitable and volunteer commitment extends from his work as a lead team member of the Texas Mobile Loaves and Fishes team, which provides meals, clothing, and living supplies to Texas's homeless and underserviced population. He also serves as a sign language interpreter for many of Austin's homeless residents. Lowe's is also a volunteer of the Lance Armstrong Foundation, Live Strong, where he donates his time to help cancer survivors. Los is a life member of the esteemed professional business fraternity Delta Sigma Pi and served as one of the five elected, elected provincial vice presidents from 2009 to 2012 for chapters in Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas, Kansas, and Missouri. Los also served on the Delta Sigma Pi National Board of Directors 2009 through 2012, helping to shape, direct, and enhance the leadership goals and direction of the organization. As one of the five founding partners and director for DSPstartup.com, Los facilitizes and nurtures the creation of small business ideas and serves as an incubation venture capitalist that supports capital infusion to aspiring business entrepreneurs. Los Ellis graduated from the University of Oklahoma's Michael F. Price College of Businesses, where he was one of the founders and creators of the Sooner Information Network, the University of Oklahoma's first student web portal and information center. He also served as a College of Business Student Oh yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, business Student Leadership President and the president of his fraternity, Delta Sigma Pi. Los has received multiple honorariums and awards for his creative and energizing contributions to education and holds multiple certifications from accredited universities around the country. Los has an extensive professional career in information technology 
and project management. He managed one-fourth of Dell Inc.'s global IT portfolios for more than two years while in Dell's CIO office. He currently works in the state of Texas and the U.S. government concerning their mutual information and technology interests. Lowe's travels as a professional motivational speaker to many of the country's best colleges and universities. His ability to deliver powerful motivational and economical performances has propelled him to the top of the speakers list in Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and beyond. Lowe's delivers an inspirational mes message coupled with current and coveted knowledge of the business world which rivals the best resources published and recorded. As a professional speaker and career coach to many future and current business leaders, Lowe's is a must-have resource for anyone serious about surviving and winning in the business world today. Thank you. You know, it's, it's, it's always uh, humbling to hear people say things about you. And I think that was the first time I, I heard that quite a few times, but um, not like that. So um, <laughs> you almost made me cry. <laughs> but, but today is not about me. Today is about you. Today is about our children. So what I want to do today is I want to I tell you a little bit about me and my background, because I think in order for me to be able to share information with you that's going to be helpful, You've got to know uh, where it comes from, right? So uh, like, like my, just that warm introduction said, I am an adoptive parent to my nephew. And you know, I remember growing up in my family, my parents wanted to have a boy so bad, so bad, that they went and they had a baby girl, another baby girl, another baby girl, another baby girl, another baby girl. And this would go on until they had nine daughters. My mother was not going to give up. She, well, my dad didn't either, but, <laughs> but they had nine girls, and they tried again, and they got two baby boys. I turned out to be the most ugly of the two, but they tried once again and got another daughter. So my family was of 12 children. I had 10 sisters, one brother. So I understand the challenge of being raised in a family with minimal resources, because even if my parents made a million dollars, we were still going to be poor because my brother ate a lot. But after that, I went on to college. Uh, my parents did what they needed to do to get us to college, and I went to college, and I realized that some of us, while we all work hard, we all aren't afforded the same rewards in life. And so one of my sisters had a challenge, and she had a son with two daughters, but she couldn't keep all three like she wanted. And so I took on a challenge that summer after my first or second year in college, and he came to stay for a summer, and then it went on to be, let's try it out for the school year. And then the next year, instead of getting uh, a ticket to send him back home, I actually got some papers from the court saying, hey, would you sign these to adopt him? And so I took that on. And so I tell you this story because I understand your challenges as a parent. I understand the challenges as a single parent. And I understand the challenges that you all face having to work a job, go to college, and still succeed, while keeping in mind the needs to help your children succeed. Now, I can't tell you I did it right from the beginning. You see, in the beginning, I thought you just put a kid on the bus and they went to school and they did their work because that's what I did, right? You know, I thought that if he needed help, someone was always going to be there to help him and give him exactly what he needed. That was going to give him that one-on-one -on -one attention. Well, it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. You see, I realized that my nephew, he became a, what we call a, a gradual C-plus student. I can guarantee he'll get a C, and every once in a while he might get a B. But when I started thinking about his future, I realized that C's weren't going to cut it. Not in a world where everyone was advancing and technology was getting better, where kids were using cell phones and playing games when, when I was at that age, I was fixing puzzles and coloring within the lines. He was going to have to be prepared. So I realized that I needed to make an active approach. So what I did was I said, let me go to the school and let me ask for help. Because see, I didn't have the luxury of going back to my sister or going back home to my mother, because see, they lived in New York. And see, at this time, he and I lived in Boston. 
and we're preparing to finish college and move and go to Oklahoma. So we're getting further away. So I went to the school and I said, what can I do different? And I got lucky. I had six of his seven teachers pulled me aside and said, thank you for taking that approach. And they gave me some tips and I wanna share some of those tips with you today. But I wanna say before we get to the tips, I wanna state two facts that I've learned. The first fact that I learned while being a parent and going through this process was that every parent, regardless of background, income, culture, where you live, every parent wants the best for their child. Every parent wants their children to have everything that's available to them for their child to succeed. That's fact number one. Fact number two says that uh, every student, every student that receives help from his parents, whether it's at home or at the school, will show improvement. You see, I, I looked over some statistics at uh, Pew, and Pew kind of helped me validate this. Pew said that for every parent that reaches out to help their child at home and attends at least one or two school functions, that that child is 30% more likely to go to college. That that child is 20% more likely to be able to deal with ambiguity and differences of lifestyle and opinions. They say that that child is more likely to attend school more regularly, and they're more likely to get passing grades, which means they're more likely to be the productive citizens that we're all teaching our children to be. Now think about what I just said. I, I, I didn't ask you to come to school for, to commit to like two weeks of uh, PTA. What I asked you to do is, statistics says, show up at least twice, twice. Now I know it's difficult. I know some of us in here are probably single parents. You know, you go to work every day, you come home, and when you get done, you still got to make dinner. You still got to look over homework. Perhaps if you got an HOA like mine, you got to mow the grass every day so you don't get a fine. <laughs> but you have things to do. You have church involvement. You probably, some of you probably take on the idea of taking on a, helping your parents, you know, in their more senior years. But you have a whole slew of things to do, and you still have to find time to go to sleep and wake up and do it again. You see? Because I know for most of us, today is the only day we get to wake up late, right? Saturday is our only day. We're like, man, they start this stuff at 9 o'clock. But, but, you you, you, but that's the only day because Sunday we get up and we do it again. We do it at church. We start all day and we devote. But Saturday is our only day. But we realize that we want so much for our kids, but we don't have a whole lot of time. So what I learned was that money wasn't my currency anymore when I was a parent. My currency was my time. Because that's how you pay for everything when you have children, with your time. You can have all the money in the world. You can have all the money in the world. But it don't equate to positive education, a positive outcome for your kids. Now, with that currency, my time, I realized that there were some things that I could do. Now, I couldn't afford to go to the school during the school day. And I know that's a challenge for most of us in here today. Some of us work seven to five or seven to nine or we work 12 hour shifts but we can still be active you see i had that same challenge i would go to school at eight in the morning and i would get done and get off campus around two then i would go work from two to seven then i come home help him with his homework and at 10 o'clock i'd be back working another job now within that time i had things i could do and i want to share with you about five things that you can do if you are challenged and your currency your time currency isn't, it a, isn't really stacked up in a, in a full amount. How many of us in here today work normal eight to five hours? Just show, show our hands. How many of us work the late shift where we can't be home in the after hours with our children? All right? So everyone has that challenge of having a job. So taking it back to my nephew, I realized that he was a C-plus student, right? C-plus with maybe one B. Now, I'm going to take this mic for a minute. Because I, I want to move around because I want, I want all of y'all to understand and feel this. Because he was a C-plus student. And I said, he was not going to be a C-plus student, not in my house. Not in my house. I didn't think it was fair. If I got to college, he was going to college too. And it was my job to get him there. So I realized that I could do two things right away. I sat down that night and I wrote a note. I wrote a note and I said, here, is the, here are the goals I got for my child. I had two goals for him. One that he would be a productive citizen and he would learn to not act up. Now, I know that's not the school job, 
But realize he spends six hours of his days at school. He spends more time at school than he does anywhere else other than asleep. So I wrote down, that's the first thing I wanted. But the second thing I wanted for my child was I wanted my child to be college ready. And I said, here are, those, here are how I'm going to get to those goals. I want him to be able to read proficiently. I want him to be able to take good tests. And I need him to understand what technology looks like tomorrow. Now, I wrote these things down. And while these may be simple things, if you write these things down and do what I did and hand those to the teachers, you've given the teachers a goal. First of all, you started to participate in the education of your child, right? But second, what you've done was you've taught, the, you've, you've given the teachers the tools to say, here is what I expect from my child. Now, you know what happens after that? The teacher will write you back, or they'll call you back, and they'll say, hey, here's what we do at the school. And now we got what you want, your expectations, and what the school provides. Now, all we got to do is bridge those two gaps. You know what I got from that? Now, when my child came home and he said, oh, I don't have a whole lot of homework, I said, that's okay, because I know this is what the teacher got for you, and here's what I want you to do. And so, even though he was a little resistant, I can tell you, it took two quarters. Two quarters for him. Some of your kids may not take two quarters. But two quarters, he went to a lot of B's and one C. He just wasn't going to do good in science. <laughs> he always told me, he said, they start fires. But, you know. but he went to all B's and one C, and I was happy with that. Now, that partnership continued on. I realized, I said, man, if I could just do those things and he got B's, what can we do to help him get to be an A student? What can I do to get him to be that kid that learns and wants to learn? So what I did was I took another step. I said, I, same lady as you saw her earlier, just like them, PTA. I think they call it PTO back then. I'm dating myself a little bit, but I went to the PTO and I said, now let's talk about what the school has in store because the, PTO, the PTA, PTO helped me understand where the school was going, where the education system was going in the future, what they were asking for to help keep our kids on top of technology. And I said, well, I saw a little bit more movement. And then I realized that he liked a certain, some things. See, my nephew was a comedian. He made everything into a joke, everything into a joke. Now see, as parents, we gotta know what our kids are good at. Some of our kids are funny. Some of our kids are very serious. Some of them, our kids have their own lifestyle. Now, what we can do is leverage how that works. See, for him, he was a comedian. And see, what I started doing was, anytime they would do any event at school that I could get to, I would go to that event. I know he liked to cut up when they, when they do uh, little skits and dramas, so I would show up. You know what it did? It got me my first goal. Me actively being at the school got me my first goal because now he didn't know when I was gonna show up. Yeah, y'all remember that, right? If you don't know when your parents gonna show up, you all scared, you following stuff, you're not passing notes no more, right? But he did that, he was, he was, he was like, uncle, you gonna show up today? Nah, I'm not going to show up, but I got, a, I got an early lunch. But it helped. Now I went from a kid that was making all C's with an occasional B. Now I got to make it about, on average, about one or two A's, a lot of B's, and he get a C every once in a while. Now, see, that's something I can live with. I don't know, I don't know about you, but I can live with that. I tell, my, I tell my, my, son, my nephew every day, I tell him when he was in school, I said, I don't need you to make all A's, but I need you to try to make A's. I don't need you to be the best, but I need you to give your best. So let me give you about five things you can do to help partner with your school to help get that same level of success. Can I do that? Okay. First and foremost, I want you all to go home and do exactly what I did. Write that note. Just write down the one or two goals you got for your children, whatever your goals are. Because teachers can't help your students if they don't know what your goals are. Everyone's goal is going to be a little bit different. Write those down and send them with your kids. And then two, talk with your children about the goals you have for them. Because they may have the same goals you have, right? Now, two, what I need you to do is, after you've done that with the school, I need you to go and I need you to use the resources that's available at the schools. Almost every ISD I've looked at in Texas has a website. And they do a good job of posting grades and what kind of work comes up. Look at those things. And I want you, when your kid comes home, Ask your children about those assignments. Ask your children about those events. Get them to participate in some of those events a little more. Ask them about the homework. Now, those are the things you can do at home, right? Now, I, 
is I don't need to say that you need to sit down and possibly read with them because we know that every time we read with our children, our children are no longer as shy. They become more confident and they feel validated. You see, as a child with me, I remember in school when I had to read out loud, I felt ashamed. I could read, didn't really like it. But see, I noticed with my nephew, when he read with me, he felt confident so that now when he reads in public, he's okay with it. So read with your children. But there's some things you can do with the school because see, you have a homework assignment tonight to go and write this for your children, but you also have a commitment to the community, to the school, to partner, to partner with the educators, to partner with the teachers that your children sit in the class with every day. You see, that teacher has 30, sometimes 40 students that she has to understand. And if she has that note, understanding what your goals are, she can better help align that child to succeed. Now, there's other ways, because some of us, you, some of you, after you do that, you want more involvement. Now, the school does great things with fundraisers. Now, some people say, I don't want to go raise money, I don't want to volunteer for stuff, because if I volunteer for the PTA, Today, they might make me the president tomorrow, right? <laughs> but see, one of the things I learned was that school, the, these, the educators have a great way of cutting big things like that down at the small assignments. So go and tell, you know, go and volunteer, but come with the idea and let them know. Say, hey, I'm the parent of Jarrell McCullough, and uh, you ain't even listening. I'm the parent of Jarrell McCullough, and I only have one hour I can devote every year. One hour. Can you help me? participate for that one hour in an event that will take one hour. You see, you've got one of the two visits you need done right there. Now, we all got kids that play sports. Some of us at some point, our kids are gonna play basketball, they're gonna be cheerleaders. Show up at those events, because I tell you what I noticed too. My nephew played basketball. Now, by the time he got to high school, he played for a school called Stony Point. Now, Stony Point was good, but you know what? He sat the bench. So when he sat the bench, he knew I was still watching him. So he had that integrity. He knew that every time, if he did something wrong, and I saw him at that event and he wasn't acting right, he wasn't gonna play no more. Now, I didn't wanna take that from him because I knew it was his goal to go to college and play college basketball, but the education came first. So I say, that's the other thing you can do. Be available at your children's event if you can. I know we're tired, but you know what? You don't have to stay for the whole game. Show up, say hi to the teachers. Say hi to the, just your child, because your presence here tells your child that it's important. It says that it means something to you. You can also help out, and, I, and I'm going to stress this one really, really big. Help out with the small things, like the yearbook committees, the, uh, when they have holiday parties. Those mean the most, because to a child in school, that's fun time. That's the fun time. Those are the things they're going to remember. The things they got a chance to work on that they can see their names documented. They got to hang out with other kids. Show up. Like I said, you don't have to be there for two hours. Show up for 30 minutes. Pop your head in on the way from work and go on home. And say, hey, I was there. It makes a difference. Now, I'm going to quote a song that I always kept in the back of my head when I was raising my nephew. Now, I'm dating myself here, but if you know, there's a lady named Whitney Houston. She had a song called The Greatest Love of All. And the opening two lines said it all. She says, I believe the children are the future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. But we know our kids can't lead unless we prepare them to be leaders. And in order to be leaders, we've got to partner with the schools. We've got to partner with the PTAs, the volunteer organizations. We've got to partner with the people you see around the room today the fire departments, the police department, uh, the anti-drinking, all of those things, we gotta partner with our community as a whole. And when we do that, we've done a couple things. We've reached those goals we have for our children. We've alleviated and helped the school with some of the frustrating of getting our kids prepared to be competitors in the real world. And in three, we've gotten our kids acclimated to a world where they believe that they matter and that they can be productive. Now, I leave you with this. As a single parent, we're all going to be challenged. As a, as a two-parent household, we're all going to be challenged. And remember, we said up front that every parent, regardless of background, age, culture, where you live, we all want the best for our kids. And so each of you have taken a great step today in showing up to say, on your only day where you could have slept in, you came out. Now, you came out to take a stance for your children's education. 
So I want you to do me a favor. When you leave tonight, after you talk to your mingle with everyone today, I want you to leave tonight. I want you to go home and I want you to sit down and I want you to write that list that we talked about 20 minutes ago. I want you to write down what your goals are for your child. Just one or two goals would be fine. One or two goals. And I want you to take a pledge today. All of you today, take a pledge to say that when I walk out of here, I'm going to go do that sometime today. And on Monday morning, I'm going to email it or I'm going to put it in the mail and send it to my child's student so that we're on the same page to know what success looks like in the end for our students. Can I get you all the pleasure of that? Oh, I like that. I like that. Now, before I go, I do want to give one distinctive, one distinctive uh, kudos. I, I just can't get over how well the young lady who got up here earlier spoke. And, and, and you know, that's a great involvement because I can tell you right now, that's the first sign of great family involvement because I got a chance to meet her, her father, and the, the little young brother. <laughs> and I looked and I said, that's what this is about today, about having parent involvement with the child. And she may not know it right now, but this is going to be a day that she's going to remember for a long time. Not because she got up here and did a wonderful speech, but because she had a chance to see education not only with the school, but with her parent involvement. And the, and the little one, he don't even know it yet, but he, he groomed for success. You, you're going to have a sister that's going to make it hard for you to achieve, man. So I want us all to be able to take that back with us now. Before we go, I want to do one last fun thing, because I, I think everything, is, everything that people do is always get on how they feel, right? Maya Angelou said it best, right? She says, people will forget what you did to them. They'll forget what you said to them. But they will never I repeat, they will never forget how you made them feel. So I want you all to leave here today with a great feeling before you go out and you're mingling with all the other community involvements and the community leaders with the schools. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to just look at somebody. Just look somebody in the eye. Anybody except me. <laughs> it's your neighbor. Go ahead. This community involvement. Just look at them real quick. Look at them. Make eye contact. And I want you to trust me right now because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I always tell people I want to start a rumor. I'm going to start a rumor today and you're going to help me. So I want you to look somebody in the eye right now and I want you to repeat after me. I want you to say, I know. Uh-uh, uh, come on, Austin, y'all. Let's do this louder. Let's, we, we supposed to be pepped up, say, I know. I know. Act like your kid did something bad. I want some authority in that speech. Look, one last time, said, I know. I look good. I look good. <laughs> you look great as parents and I want you to leave with that enthusiasm today. I thank you, and thank you again for that wonderful intro. Thank you, Austin ISD, and thank you, parents, for coming out and being involved. It's, it's uh, beautiful, you know what I'm saying, to see, see our people come uh, together, you know what I'm saying, in a city where it seems like we don't get much support in the areas that we need it in. And it's good that we got people um, like Miss Terry, like the brother who just got off, and everybody who came up here who are, are fighting for us, you know, and for our children. Um, I grew up in the school system, um, you know, Reagan High, Pierce Middle School, that let you know off top, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't easy, you know what I mean? Like, they would pass people just to pass people, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it, it uh, you know, <clears throat> for me it's been a journey. I, I appreciate, you know what I'm saying, everybody who I came in contact with, the people uh, that, that motivated me, you know what I'm saying, as a young black man because that, that gave me strength, you know what I'm saying? Like to know that, you know, I don't know you, you don't know me, but you got love for me. And you're gonna, you'll, you know, do whatever you can to open up pathways and doorways for, for my future. And so with just those small opportunities, it gave me much confidence, you know, cause I, it's, I felt like I had a backing, you know? So with that being said, I, I made it my life's purpose to be the same thing someone was to me. It's like one of my mentors said, duplicate yourself, you know? You know, don't, you know, you, you're an individual, but duplicate yourself in someone else. Like the Boys and Girls Club motto, be somebody to somebody, right? So <clears throat> anyway, uh, I'm gonna do like two pieces. Uh, the first piece I'm gonna do um, is a piece that was inspired when I got into the knowledge of who I was as a black man, knowing my history, knowing where I come from, the deeper history of my ancestors. And I was on it, you know what I'm saying? I was like, you know, I, I was deep into it, you know what I'm saying? Wearing the African culture, you know what I'm saying? Like reading black power books and, you know, every conversation you had with me was about 
black, you know? <laughs> when I'm brothers, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know? <laughs> like, can't take nowhere with you without, you know? But it's all good, you know? But uh, <laughs> I remember I was on uh, Touch the Chicago one day. Don't ask me what I was doing on Touch the Chicago. I wasn't selling drugs. But I was, I was uh, getting my hair cut, uh, edge up. And, uh, you know, I had my African culture on. I ran into a brother. And it was funny, he was like, you know, he was like, you must be one of them African brothers. One of them all my life I've been whole brothers. He was like, anybody tell you you look like Huey from the boondocks? <laughs> I said, he said, uh, he said, that dashi, he said, where you from? Let me guess, Zamunda. He was like, I bet you got elephants and giraffes chilling outside your crib. Monkeys throwing poop at you, literally. It was like, it was like that dashiki is fly though. But he said, let me ask you something. Why you act like you better than us? Every time you talk history this and history that, man, you ain't no professor. Where your PhD at? He say, I know, I know you proud. And you claim that you African. But you in America, Jack, you black. And black is black. Black is brown. Black is beautiful, baby. I'm on a black brick road to black land in search of the black man inside of this beautiful brown body. Anybody got directions? I want to travel to Thug's Mansion and greet Tupac at the platinum gates he made from his album sales. I want to know if heaven has a ghetto, and if so, is it on the east side of Hell's Highway? You see, I want to zoom, zoom, room to the boom, boom, room and catch Marvin Gaye on the art to blessing the stage. Ray Charles' fingertips, French kiss and piano keys, smooth as grandma's lemonade. Melodies melting the panties off the Virgin Mary. Oops, I mean Mama Betty. This is Blackland. The city that never eats, because his passion's so strong that his belly feeds off his own hunger. I heard through the grapevine about this streak on Civil Rights Lane. It was on uh, 16th Street behind that Birmingham church where those four little girls were offered a sacrificial lamb to the God of fire. I imagine they spoke in a language that only deaf could understand. You see, this is black land. Home of the free slaves, beautiful headings, paragraph bodies, traumatic inclusions, indented skins from branded backs, branded back in the day, back, back in the day when cotton was the only good thing we knew of that was white. Not excluding the sky because even the clouds gave us hell sometimes. You see this location. Lubricates brutal bones to become brave again, to make a man feel like protection, to make a woman feel like blessing, and I need direction. I find my spirit guided by the compass of the soul train from the vocal horn, the leaner horn, to the redeeming horn of John Cool Train. Here I heard our holidays are holy days. Celebrating the life of Billy Holiday's sober days. As we throw ourselves at the feet of Sunday mornings, it never fails that we fall down by the riverside, waiting in the water for God to carry us home. You see, our children were diagnosed with American nightmares. So our constitution became I Have a Dream, followed by the ballot or the bullet, so that they would know that their parents be used as safeguards to protect their imagination. So let our hearts be used as bulletproof vests to protect the future of black men. The skyscrapers are made of legends and recycled stories. Our entertainment is our own language. Richard Pryor, Bill Cosby, Flip Wilson, they're the therapists of our community. So if laughter is comfort to the soul, dead is my flesh because my spirit's at rest, but I can't sleep until I see this theme park of possibilities with my own eyes, touch the air with my own skin, taste the conversations with my own tongue. My ears drown in this fantasy as I listen to the pimp, preaching from the podium to the pulpit I pay, tithes and offerings to hear hymns and sermons, coloring in the blank spaces of this faded glory. I click the heels of my Adidas three times and say there's no place like black man. But the truth is, there's no such place as black man or black man. Black derives from the word Negro, which derives from the word Negro, which means death. So if I'm black deaf, that means my city is dead black. 
these directions have led me to a cemetery filled with my ancestors. And I often wonder that a heaven did have a ghetto with the name be Blackland. <laughs> And in, in, in this system, they don't teach us African-American history necessarily, and they don't teach us true black history or African history, which is so rich and so great that when I found out, man, I could, I could walk anywhere and feel proud of who I was, you know? And we gotta fight for stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Why are we not fighting for that? Why are we not fighting for some classes, even if it's after school classes? You know, when every other race wanna do something for their people, it's okay. But when we want to do something for our people, it's a problem. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. And that's, and that's a given. That's a given. That's important. You know? So uh, I'm all about revolution, you know? <laughs> and uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm a little bit extreme, been told sometimes, but I've cooled down. You know, I was a class president, you know what I'm saying, of, of Reagan my senior year, and that was a blessing because I didn't, I never really challenged myself to school. I would just fall asleep in classes because I wasn't interested in nothing they was teaching. My 12th grade year was like the, uh, was, it, was a major change because I really got kicked out of Reagan. You know, I wasn't doing right, you know, but God put us in certain predicaments, you know, to teach us a lesson. That's how I know. I, I feel like there's no accidents, you know. Uh, but when, but what happened was, got kicked out, went to uh, AYW. They wasn't teaching me nothing. I dropped out. You know what I'm saying? I just was wandering the streets, going to the libraries, reading books. To these two ladies at Reagan one day, they stopped me and they say, "What you doing out here?" You know? They thought I had a Bible, but it, it just looked like it. But it was my writing journal, you know. And so they thought I was, you know. But they was like, "We want to say a prayer for you, you know, and we want to get you back in school." So they said a prayer for me, like right in the middle. We said a prayer right in the middle of the street, you know what I'm saying, on uh, Patton Lane. So if any one of y'all know what Patton Lane is, real hood, real ghetto. So we was out there uh, saying a, a prayer in the middle of the street. And from that point on, it's like, and my homeboy, he dropped out at the same time. But we, we made, made a, a pact with each other. We're going to go back. We're going to challenge ourselves. We're going to do it together. And that's what friends are for. That's what brothers are for, sisters are for. You know, sometimes you just need a little bit of motivation, you know. And so we went back, we went back, and I told myself, I'm gonna challenge myself this time, I'm gonna do something I, I've never done. And so I ran for class president, and it was amazing the, the kind of support I got from the teachers and the students, everybody, and uh, became class president. Long story short, you know, I just used my life as a testimony, you know, uh, let you know that you could be anything you wanna be, you know anything you know some of us are more gifted in certain areas it takes us a little bit more some some of us a little bit more longer to get to, to a, a certain area but like the brother said with his son you know you work you work with people you know what i'm saying and where, where, where they're at you know and you just continue to try to pull them up find their talent so one of the teachers gave me an assignment she was a white lady you know she gave me an assignment because she, she knew that i would just come to her class and sleep or not come to her class at all so she gave me an assignment to do at the end of the year, and this is the reason why I'm telling you this, because this really just changed my whole outlook on education. She gave me an assignment, and the assignment was to read the Malcolm X um, biography, autobiography, and to do a documentary, because she knew I was into that kind of stuff, and also in a film. So she said, you, you read this book, and you do a documentary based on whatever you took from that book. And see, what that did for me, that let me know that you know, the education system is a joke, you know, because that one book and that one assignment, it gave me more motivation than I ever had, you know, than I ever had. And so um, anyway, I did it. I got to graduate. Um, and from that point on, you know, my life, my life has been a blessing. I've been able to, uh, like I said, duplicate me. I'm going to do this next poem. Um, and it's about revolution. So, you know, we ain't going to set nothing on fire here, you know. But, but that's what the, that's what it's about, and it's really a song. But I'ma just spit it a cappella. That's cool. Okay. I am the evolution of the revolution. God in my iPod. This is heaven music. Free your soul to gain complete control. 
Application and knowledge makes it believable, but they don't even know what they fighting for. Their leaders teach them wrong, therefore they died in war. In vain, overdosing with drugs in their veins, posing as thugs for their pain, losing their blood for a gain. It's strange how we train to just jump on the train. Fear, success, afraid to hit the clutch for the game. Cussing to be a nothing, but nothing is just a name, cause even nothing is something. This is something for your brain, think. A vote in this crooked nation is not the same dream. Democrats, Republicans considered the same thing. Tired of being tricked. Yo, that's how we ought to feel. Keep it real. It's Malcolm X on a thousand dollar bill. I'm getting paid. I say rise, rise, rise to the highest pay. Homage to the flyers bow. Down to your highness. Humilla, 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 miller, humility. Military and visionary when it comes to synergy. Got inside my energy. Call it my energy. Metamorph my wings, fly free. Mortals envy me. Jealousy is definitely a health disease. Greed is a deadly deed. Addictive amphetamine, yeah. I keep it heavy as a 6 4 Chevy. Keep doing what I do, and even if they don't let me, don't accept me, then reject me. It's whatever, but I'm ready. If your plan ain't to help me, there ain't nothing you can tell me, yo. And I ain't selfish. My plan is for my people. Ban all the evil in the land, and you see truth, see through the lies, let the mind come to feed you. It's divine for you to shine unafraid, be cool, get blazed. I'm half God, half amazing. Teddy City down, set a fire to this nation. Raise up an arm with a fist full of flame. Let them know that we never afraid to light it up and get blazed. Yeah, we'll tell a hole in the city in the earth, light it up. Get place, light it up, get place, light it up, get place, light it up, yeah. Shoot your ego, give your life to the next hand. I'm a superhero, a Malcolm X man. Body form a Johnny Storm, and when I blow up, life goes on after you're born, young brother grow up. Study your history, and not just his story, conquer your victory. But warriors get the glory, never afraid to step in the face of adversity, prepare for the cage, rather be dead in the grave than labeled a slave that set it ablaze. Hall full of flame and a ball full of pain. I was taught by the liars, dividers, combiners, red flag, blue rat, equals water and fire. They tell me, cool, 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 cool it off. But I turned to the big bad wolf and huffing, puffing, blew it off. If I shut my mouth now, I could lose it all. But if I don't, they shut me down. Nothing to lose it all. Yeah, MLK had a dream and they blasted him away and returned gasoline on the flag with the flame, get blazed. I'm half God, half amazing. Tell the city down, set a fire to this nation. Raise up an arm with a fist full of flame. Let them know that we never afraid to light it up and get blazed. Yeah, we'll tell a hole in the city, in the earth. Light it up, get blazed. Light it up, get blazed. Light it up. Get place. I right, don't set nothing on fire, everybody. Y'all take it easy, y'all. Thank you so much for having me. The program focus is to get more parental involvement at the campus and district level from parents and guardians of students who attend AISD schools. Our target audience is the African American community. With this conference, we're hoping to get more folks involved and excited and engaged and also let them know that their involvement increases the success of their student and also the equity in their students' education. The district is trying to reach out more now to the parents, you know, to get them to get involved with their child's education and putting out resources, you know, to help the parents that, that are not knowledgeable of what's available for them through the Austin Independent School District. So that's what I've seen today and that's what I've gotten out of it so far. I think it went well. And I think as the year goes by and it grows, uh, it's a very good resource. And we just may have to make sure we get more parents out to attend. Uh, so the communication is going to have to be a uh, broader scale so we can get more people involved, I mean, all over the city of Austin to come and attend these kind of things. It was a wonderful event. Uh, we left parents with multiple ways to engage in their community, to engage with their schools, and to be active mentors and role models for their children and their children's advancement in education. And with me is a very special guest today. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Mariah Smith. I go to small middle school. I'm in the sixth grade. And I had a lot of fun introducing you. Um, I've been having a really good time. That's great. Well, we thank you for attending this event. 
and we hope to see you at the next event next year.